Welcome to Ascend, and welcome to the first video in the Explainer series. Today we're going to be introducing the Ascend platform with a high-level overview of the environment, including the system dashboard, but more importantly, how to build your first data flow using read connectors, transforms, write connectors, and data feeds. So let's get started. But one other thing I should point out. Please check out the free trial link at the bottom of this slide. If you like what you hear today and you want to experiment on your own, head over to Ascend and get signed up today. Upon login, the main Ascend system dashboard shown here is a great place to get a high level view of your entire Ascend environment. Here you can see all the data services and their respective data flows along with user and team membership all in one place. At the top of the dashboard, you'll see a graph showing the current state of all components across all data flows and the data services they reside in. There are four main components in a data flow, and here you can see the current state of our read connectors, transforms, write connectors, and data feeds. We'll go into more detail on these later. In addition, I can filter component type to get a view of how many of these components exist within my Ascend environment. Let's navigate to the data service we'll be using for this demo. This is the Power Systems Data Service, and in it, we will create a simple data flow that takes collected power usage data along with weather data to do some useful analysis. So let's create our first data flow. So I just click on the data flow button and I give it a name and an optional brief description, hit create, and I've instantly created my data flow. What you see here is what we refer to as the canvas. And it's this screen that you'll be constructing your data flow. So let's jump in. Here's a quick overview of the menus and options on the data flow screen. The dashboard icon will take you back to the system dashboard. The data service menu will show you a list of all data services that you can quickly jump to along with being able to manage various settings and permissions. The data flow menu allows settings and permission configuration for this data flow or for others in this data service. The Add menu is what you'll be using most of the time, and it's from there where you can create new read and write connectors, transforms, data feeds, and the grouping of components for better data flow visibility. The Import and Export allow saving and exporting versions of your data flow, so it can be copied and redeployed in a different data service or for versioning. The other tabs show data profiling information and the ability to perform a quick on-demand query. On the far right-hand side of the screen, you'll see a link to our online docs, complete with a public discussion board and a drop-down menu underneath your login name for other settings. Now let's create a read connector that will be the source of our power data. To do that, I click the Add menu, select Connector, and I get a list of possible pre-built connectors to choose from. I can easily build my own custom connector if I so desire, but for this demo, I'll be connecting to an S3 source, so I'll click on the read icon for S3 and configure it. I'll give it a name, I'll select the S3 bucket it resides in, I'll use glob, which essentially means find all the path names matching a specified pattern. So in this case, I'll give it one that matches my known file name that starts with power in the DF2 IoT power path. I'll supply my S3 creds, access key, secret key, and hit the test button to ensure all S3 bucket settings, paths, and permissions are valid. Once that's done, Ascend will parse the data based on what I chose as the parser type. Here I chose XSV since I know it's a CSV file. I select comma as the delimiter field. Ascend will now automatically parse the header in the first few lines of data to generate the schema and allow me to inspect it. I can also preview the schema information and just make sure nothing looks wrong or needs to be changed. As I scroll through here, I do notice that Kitchen38 column has the wrong type and should be a float, so I'll correct that up front. By default, if the schema contains some fields that look like non-screen data, like dates, numbers, we will try to automatically convert them and generate warnings for values we can't convert. You can actually disable this warning for all non-string columns, so we just ingest the data with default values of null, 
where we can't convert, allowing you to fix things later in a downstream transform. Next, I will set a refresh schedule, which determines how often a send will check for new data. I'll choose the system default to one hour, but I can go as granular as one minute. Processing priority is used to schedule which components to run in the order of priority. Higher priority numbers are scheduled before lower ones. So increasing the priority on a component also causes all of its upstream components to be prioritized higher as well. You can set negative priorities, which can be used to postpone work until excess capacity becomes available. But for now, I'm gonna leave this unconfigured. All that's left now is for, for me to hit create. My connector gets created and the data gets ingested and parsed into my data flow. And at this point, I can choose to inspect it by clicking on the records tab in viewing the contents of them, and also looking at the partition information to look at column stats and job details like elapsed time, etc. Now let's do some interesting analysis with our power data. Let's create a SQL transform that returns the average power usage per month and group by month in descending order by usage. But first, let me show you a neat trick using a feature called Workspaces. Workspaces allows you to pin any component to the side of the screen so you can easily refer to it. This can be especially handy when you're in the middle of writing some SQL in the editor and you need to refer to a column name in a source read connector, for example. So let's go ahead and create our first transform. To do this, I click on the Add menu, select Transform, give my new transform a name, And for the query type, I can either select SQL or PySpark, but for this demo, we're gonna be using SQL. In a later video, we'll cover PySpark. Now at this point, <clears throat> I can choose between uh, two ways to enter my SQL logic. I can either do it via the raw SQL editor, which allows me to just write it out simply as SQL code as I normally would, or I can use the intuitive SQL query builder. We're gonna use the query builder here. And as you can see, as I begin to enter in the first one or two characters for any field, the query builder will offer me suggestions and auto-completions that I can quickly click and use immediately. Remember, I can also refer to any pin data on my workspace tab too. I can also set a priority here, but won't be doing it at this time. And I hit create, send will begin processing my SQL query immediately. And if I find any errors, um, then I can go back and I can correct them. So send will let me know about that. And once the transform is complete, I can now go back, view the results by clicking on the records tab and also viewing the partition stats on the partition tab. Okay, now let's write those results out to a place where others can get to it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a rate connector that will create a destination file which contains the result of the transform that I just created. And for this, I'm going to create it in S3 using the same bucket but a different path. To do that, I'll click Add um, on the menu, select Connector, Again, get the list of possible pre-built right connectors to choose from. I'll be connecting to an S3 source, so I'll click on the right icon for S3 and configure it. I'll give it a name, select the S3 bucket it resides in, enter a prefix, in this case df2-iot slash powersys. This essentially defines the, the path name for the file. Um, and then I'll specify a pattern uh, for the file name that it's actually going to write out starting with uh, the word power usage and a suffix of CSV. And then from there, uh, I'm gonna deselect the partition output files because I don't want a separate file per partition. Uh, again, I'll supply my S3 creds, access key, secret key, hit the test button to ensure all my S3 bucket settings, paths, and permissions are valid. 
Once that's done, I'll select a format to write the data out as. In this case, I know it's CSV, so I'll choose XSV. Uh, select comma as the delimiter and uh, CRLF as the line terminator. Uh, I'll indicate that the header row has uh, contains column names. And um, then the last thing is I can determine or set the, uh, the, the type of compression. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it uncompressed for now. And like before, I'll leave the uh, priority unset. I'll hit create and let Ascend write the file out to S3. Awesome. Now you've seen a very simple example of a data flow, which contains a read connector, a SQL transform, and a write connector. Since Ascend lets me add as many read connector sources as I want to my data flows, I'm going to add another one. This time, I'll be adding an S3 source that has weather data in it and a timestamp that corresponds to the same time period as what's contained in the power data connector. Basically, I'm going to go through the exact same steps I went through when I created the power data connector to add this read connector. So I'll move through this quickly so we can get to the more interesting part to the demo. Here we go. Okay, now we'll take the data from both the weather and the power data sources and join them together via transform, with date being the join key. This will allow us to combine the weather data for the same date as the power usage data into a single table, so we can do some interesting analysis based on power usage for particular weather patterns. So this time, like last time, we'll create the transform in a similar way, but instead of using the SQL query builder, I'll create it using raw SQL. And one neat trick you'll see in the demo is I can use autocompletion to build out all the columns in the power data source for my SQL select statement and make it pretty by right clicking the selected SQL code and choosing reformat SQL. This makes it way easier to view my code. Uh, I'll add the SQL interjoin code and make sure to add the columns for the weather data um, to, to my final SQL selection. Hit create and Ascend begins processing my SQL query immediately. I can then view my results in the records tab of the transform and where I'll be able to see the weather related columns that I had selected earlier. Okay, let's take the join results from the last transform and create a data feed that contains this data. Data feeds are powerful constructs designed to allow data flows and data services to communicate live data with each other. What this means is I can create a very complex data flow that outputs a single result table and share that with others in my organization, say in a different data service, without having to give them access to my actual data flow. So let's go ahead and build a data feed. They're incredibly easy to build and use. To do this, I simply click the Add menu, choose Data Feed, choose Create since we're building a new one, give it a name, tell it what upstream transform to connect to, and then apply access permissions if I want. But for now, I'm just going to make it available to everybody in my environment. Hit Create, and that's it. I now have a dedicated data spigot that contains a very specific data set that it can now allow others to subscribe to and build their data flows off. Let's see how easy it is to subscribe to an existing data feed. To do this, we'll go back to the system dashboard and navigate to the engineering data service. Inside there is an existing data flow called test harness, so we'll click on that. To add an existing data feed to this data flow, 
I simply click the Add menu, choose Data Feed, and select Connect. This will bring up a list of all data feeds that I have access to. To make it easy, I can do a keyword search on the name, the description, or something in the schema to find the data feed I'm interested in. Typing only the first two characters of my data feed, in this case, PO, actually brings up the data feed that I want. I click on it and I can instantly preview the data inside it and confirm it is indeed the one I'm interested in. I am, so I click the subscribe button, give it a name, confirm what I want to connect to, and hit create. I now have a data feed I can use as input into my data flow and start doing some interesting things with. All right, at this point, we're gonna create one last transform on our newly connected data feed to show the power of how you can use them to power your data flows. For this one, we'll create the transform a little bit differently. We're gonna right click on the data feed itself and select the create new transform from the menu presented there. And once I do this, a set will automatically name it for me as a convenience. I can change it if I want and even fill out enough of the basic raw SQL so that I can get a, a, a quick select of all the columns uh, for my results. Um, and at this point, I can just add more SQL logic to this, to what already exists, con and continue, you know, create it, and then continue building my data flows going forward. Hopefully, you got a real good sense of the power and what Ascend can do for you, and that you can now build your own data flows. Of course, if you need an environment to try some of this out, you could just head over to the URL on this slide and sign up for your free trial today. It's free. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to providing more content like this for you in the future.